Today I'd like to talk about the binomial distribution and the associated equation we use in statistics and I'd like to talk about how to solve the equation by hand on a TI-84 calculator and also in Excel. So first I'd like to quickly introduce the logic of the binomial and we'll start with the classic problem of we're flipping a coin twice and I want to know what is the probability that I'll get exactly zero heads, exactly one head, or exactly two heads. So we know that the first coin can come up heads and the probability of that is 50% or 0.5 as a decimal. It can also come up tails and the probability of that is also 0.5 and the second coin can do the same two things. So, what is the probability that the first and second coins will both get heads? Well, we know from the multiplication rule in statistics that the probability of thing A and thing B both happening is the product, what happens when you multiply their individual probabilities. So if I multiply 0.5 by 0.5, I'll get the probability that both of those things happen which is uh, one quarter or 0 0.25. So that is also true of if I get tails on the first coin and heads on the second coin, heads and tails or and tails and tails. Great, so let's fill in our graph. So how could I get zero heads? I could do that by getting tails on the first coin and tails on the second coin and that's the only way. So the probability of that is 0.25, or 25%. So I'll fill in my bar chart. How could I get one head? Well, I could get coin 1 is heads, and coin 2 is tails, so this. Or coin 1 could be tails, and coin 2 could be heads, right here. So we remember from the addition rule of probability that when there are two options, one thing A or thing B could happen, the likelihood is the sum of their probabilities. So 0 0.25 plus 0 0.25 is 0 0.5, and that is the probability of getting exactly one head. And finally, how could I get two heads? The only way that could happen is if both coins come up heads, so that probability is 0 0.25. It turns out there are equations we can use to find out the probabilities of each of those events, and they come from this formula right here, where P and Q are the probability of two, the two different outcomes. I'm going to say that P is heads, and we said the likelihood of that was 50% or 0 0.5, and Q is tails, which is also 50% likely. And then we use this term n, and n is the number of events, or in this case, the number of times I flipped the coin, which here was 2. So let's multiply out the terms of our binomial, since it's to the second power, and we'll simplify the pq and qp terms to get p squared plus 2pq plus q squared equals 1. Okay. So this is going to seem strange, but when I substitute these values of P and Q in here, this term is going to tell me the likelihood of zero heads. This term is going to tell me the likelihood that I'll roll exactly one head. And this term will tell me the likelihood of two heads. So let's try it out. Uh, to find the likelihood of zero heads, we square 0 0.5. We know that 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 is 0 0.25. The second term, P times Q, again 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 is 0 0.25, but then we multiply that by 2, and that gives us 0 0.5. And the third term, Q squared, again 0 0.5 squared is 0 0.25. So this is very useful, but you can imagine that if I flip the coin 50 times and n was equal to 50, the equation would be much too much to deal with. So that's where this next equation comes in. So this may look intimidating, but it shouldn't be because the variables are the same. 
P is the probability of one outcome, Q is the likelihood of the other, N is the number of events, so the number of times I flip the coin, and we're going to use X, the number of successes. So this is like the number of heads. So the way this will work is I will tell it, I'm going to flip the coin twice, N equals two, I'm wondering the likelihood that I will get one head, one success, so x equals one, and my answer, the p of x, the probability of x, will be that probability. So this answer would give me one of the bars on the graph I just made. What's new here is this factorial symbol, and the factorial simply means that you multiply all of the numbers before that number together. So 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. There are some properties of this that you can take advantage of if you're doing these by hand. For instance, 15 factorial divided by 10 factorial uh, divides out all of the numbers less than 10. So it's just 15 times 14 times 13 times 12 times 11, which is an enormous number and 0 factorial is equal to 1. The easier way to deal with factorials is to calculate them on a calculator, which you can do by pressing the math button right here, and then using the right arrow to go over to probability, and then down a ways to the exclamation point, number 4. So for instance, if I type 5 exclamation point factorial, it'll give me the answer 120, just as before. So let's try an example. What's the likelihood of getting one head when a coin is tossed three times? So we're still dealing with coins, so the likelihood of getting heads is 0.5, as is the likelihood of getting tails, so P and Q are both 0.5. N, the number of events, I'm tossing the coin three times, so N equals three. And x, the number of successes, I'm interested in the likelihood of getting one head, so x equals 1. So I'm going to type these things into the equation for legibility, but go through and check on your own, make sure I did it right. So 3 factorial, 3 times 2 times 1, 3 times 2 is 6, times 1 is still 6, divided by 3 minus 1 factorial, 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 times 1 is 2, so that part is 2, times 1 factorial is 1, so this is 6 over 2, times 0.5 to the first, just 0.5, times 0.5 to the 3 minus 1, which is 2, so 0.5 squared, this is 0.25 as we know, so 6 halves, or 3 times 5, 0.5 times 0.25. If you have a calculator handy, you can find out equals 0 0.375. So how would I do that on the calculator? It turns out that when you, if you press second and then vars, that'll get you this distribution menu. And then you can scroll down to the binome PDF function. And then once you click that, there's a special order in which you have to enter the data, uh, separated by column, by commas. So first you put n, the number of events. So in my last problem, that was 3. And then comma. And then p, the likelihood of one outcome. So flipping a coin, that's 0.5, comma. And then x, the number of successes, still interested in 1. So I'll put 1, close parentheses, hit enter, and I get 0.375, just as I did by hand. Finally, if you're interested in doing this in Excel, you can open up a spreadsheet and click on a blank cell and type equals binome dist, and then open parentheses, and then you see this little pop-up shows me what I need to enter separated by commas. So first the number s, the x, the number of successes, so that was 1, comma. The number of trials are n, the number of events, so that's 3, comma. The probability of success, 
0 0.5, comma. And this last thing is whether we want it to be cumulative, whether we want it to include the likelihoods of getting fewer successes. And in what we've been doing, the answer is no, so I'm going to type false, and then close parentheses, and hit enter. And that should get me 0 0.375. Excellent. So thanks for listening, and please let me know in the comments if you have any questions.